Welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we are going to see if the arrival van will charge on Type 2 and CCS2. It probably won't, but you'll have to watch and find out. And we're going to be using the brand new Felton charge cube to do so. So, let's go. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is load up the arrival software, which we got into on the last episode from this nine billion pound company that went bust, uh, and log the can just to see what mode it's in before we chuck, plug the charge port in, because I'm hoping it will change from drive mode to charging mode, which maybe tell us if it's gonna work. Now this software basically shows me every single bit of can. So as you can see here, I can scroll down through and I can see loads of different can messages. Hopefully I will find the one which says something about the battery. So I found this bit which says arrival charging controller. So I'm hoping these states will change as soon as I plug a charge port in. Now, I'm gonna take the charge cube, which has loads of second life batteries inside, but I'll show you about that in a bit. Take this zappy cable and I'm gonna reach around and I hope it reaches, maybe just reaches, and plug it into this charge port that's hidden under here. Hopefully it might do something if it goes in. Oh, it's in. Uh, what we got then? Oh, sounds like a motorbike starting up, but there's lots of noise happening right now. We are still in drive mode though, which isn't the best thing, but on the screen just there, which I'm gonna take this off the camera, man, you can see there's a little charging signal, which means it might actually be charging. Maybe we should check the charger and see if I can get myself into a weird situation and press this button here. Oh, lots more noises. <laughs> Not telling me anything on here yet though, which is rather annoying. So it appeared that it wanted to charge, but then decided it doesn't want to charge. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get out the CCS charger. I'm gonna see whether it's CCS charges because there's different types of charging happening here. Now I'm gonna explain the charge port for you a little bit more. In here, you have your type two charge port and here you have L1, L2, neutral and earth, and you have these two pins. One is called proximity pilot and one is called control pilot. Proximity means exactly what it means, proximity. So when it plugs it in, it stops the vehicle from driving. Control pilot is all about the comms. Now on low voltage stuff like this, which isn't crazy DC charging, AC charging, it basically uses a PWM signal and some stuff to communicate. But CCS is very different because what CCS does is, let me grab another cable, this one here, it uses a proximity, but it does something called power line communication. Now that is quite a technical thing. You also have your DC here. How can I explain power line communication? Some of you have Wi-Fi at home and you have that little thing you plug into the wall and you can plug another thing in somewhere else in the house to give you a hotspot. And it basically puts your Wi-Fi signals through your power in your house. That's power line communication. So we're gonna grab the CCS charger now. But before I do so, I'm just gonna quickly explain to you a bit about charge cube because it's pretty damn cool. Now, this is a 10 foot C container, as you can see. And it's built with, by me and my team at Felton. Um, we've been developing this for a long time and it has chargers on either side. It has power going in from the grid or from a generator from whatever you want. And then has lots of outputs which can go to really cool things called pavilions. I call it pavilion just because it sounds a bit posh, but it's basically a mini sea container. I mean, look at it. It's really sturdy, has two chargers on it. You basically drop these in yards or anywhere you need for rapid deployable charge infrastructure. And the best thing is it uses second life batteries. Now, let's have a look in here, shall we? Inside the seat container, we have a rather large 50 kilowatt inverter, and it can have two of these, so it can do 100 kilowatts. We then have some power electronics, which is basically your fuses. We have some communication systems here. So this here takes the canvas data in from the Tesla, makes the Tesla battery still think it's in a car, even though it's not, and then communicates with the inverter to make it think it's a BYD battery, I think. Something along those lines. So these are Tesla Model 3 battery packs. As you can see, there's quite a bit of room. That's because there can be up to six of these in this container, giving us 450 kilowatt hours of battery. And then there's liquid cooling systems, which have been maintained because you know, the battery still no cooling. They don't need much cooling. We just circulate the cooling to stop them getting any hot spots. Now, this is really exciting. If you want to know more about ChargeCube, head to chargecube.com and that's cube with a Q and check out what they have to offer because soon we'll have these with 240 kilowatt CCS rapid charging. 
built in. Now let's find a CCS charger, shall we? I have a Chinese CCS charger, which is mm, all right, maybe might work. So I'm gonna nick the power supply from the charge cube and plug this thing in, which is a very cheap Chinese charger that costs, I think it actually cost three grand a couple of years ago. So expensive, but now they're really cheap. And we're gonna see if this works on the arrival van. So if you look in there, this is the one that goes to the CCS port. We actually have positive, negative for DC and the control pilot stuff. And then I think this is some safety stuff like uh, h fill things like that. So this, oh, temp sensors, that's what they are. Is that plugged in? Looks like it. Let's get the three phase power supply plugged into this, which I'm gonna steal out the side of the charge cube. Oh, and the reason I can steal it out the side of the charge cube is because it runs as a backup. So if it loses the grid supply, it just keeps running. It's quite happy. So you never lose charging infrastructure or backup generator supply, all that stuff. It just keeps on going even if you pull this out. Like that, see? And guess what? Look, it's all still lit up and running. Isn't that great? Ah, AC. Let's see what it greets me with this. Look how high quality that is. Welcome. How long is this gonna take to load? Oh, we've even got a loading screen with it. <laughs> there we go. Right, so we're on here. We're in CCS mode, because it does have a CHAdeMO connector as well. Uh, I think I plug it in, then hit start. Let's find out, shall we? So let's plug this into here. All right, that's in. Start button. Analyzing, apparently. Uh, my laptop's gone to sleep, though. Is the thing doing anything? The van is doing a whole load of nothing right now. And looking on here, I have no information of whether it's charging or not. Great! Clearly CCS is not an option that works on this van. AC may work a little bit, but CCS is a complete uh, no-go, or it could actually be this really cheap CCS charger, because I know we've had issues with this thing in the past not working. Now, I have a question for you all. Do we carry on trying to fix this thing or do we fit something more interesting into it? Like a Tesla Model 3 system? Now this is what I am talking about. Yes, the arrival line is great and if I could get it working, it would be amazing. But what I have found out with people online which have been really helpful is that arrival never developed fault logging. So it's never gonna tell me what's actually wrong with it unless it's a real major problem. So I may be chasing my tail for a very long time and I really wanna get that van on the road. So I'm thinking it might be more interesting to take something like this, which is a complete Tesla Model 3 system and put this into the van because this battery pack should definitely fit up under the floor because you will see saw how massive that battery pack was that me and Nick took out. And this motor here should quite easily fit in the front of the van. I mean, I don't see any reason why that shouldn't. So it shouldn't be that bad of a thing. We still keep a screen for the Model 3 as well. So it will look like the original rival thing. We have all the HVAC systems self-driving, rapid charging. There are so many benefits potentially of using something like this into the arrival van. And this whole system here that's in front of you, we've actually powered up as it is. Now I know if you take a step back, it looks like a giant hunk of junk and a big mess, but it actually is fully operational. And we also have the software on the Tesla stuff so we can reverse engineer bits and make it happy even if it's not. Let me know in the comments what you think about us doing that as it's getting to the point where I think we may have to fit a different system into the van, just so we can get it on the road and have some fun with it. Well, that didn't go to plan, did it? So CCS doesn't work, AC might work. That's about it. This thing is getting very, very, very frustrating. So I need to make a decision pretty damn soon. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and coming back on this episode. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't done already. And I will be back with the Avivar van some point soon. I just don't know what I'll be doing with it as of yet.